Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us to Vietnam Korea FinTech webinar today. Uh, today, webinar starts at 3 o'clock to one and a half an hour. It is hosted by FinTech Center Korea and Vietnam Silicon Valley. It is to promote the Vietnam and Korea's FinTech industry and company and exchange information today. 안녕하십니까. 한국 베트남 핀테크 해외 진출 웨비나 시리즈를 지금부터 시작을 하겠습니다. 어, 대부분 영어로 사회를 진행할 거고요. 간혹 한국어로 어, 설명을 드리도록 하겠습니다. 그렇죠. Okay. Let us start the webinar with a welcoming remarks from Yu Shin Jung, chairman, to deliver his welcoming remarks. Please welcome Yu Shin Jung for his welcoming remarks. Good afternoon, I'm Yi Shin Jung, Chairman of the Fintech Center Korea. First of all, I would like to express my deep appreciation to Duty of Counselor in the Embassy of Vietnam, who will give a congratulatory remark, and Gip Song, a representative in Vietnam Silicon Valley, who co-hosted this, uh, this seminar, uh, Dong Park, Park, Senior Manager of uh, k Gross for having a presentation of a FinTech Innovation Fund. And as for corporate presenters, I would like to thank presenters from Vietnam, uh, FinTech companies, Jung, uh, Jung Dang, uh, CEO of Nano Technologies, Ronald Le, CEO of uh, Hawking, and also two presenters from the uh, Korean side, uh, Duke Lee, uh, CSO in uh, Pin2B, uh, Will Choi, uh, Senior Manager in uh, uh, Fingovina, and all other audience and participants to join this uh, webinar. These days, there is a negative view on the global economy, which will go through difficult and uncertainty period in the second half of the year due to the prolonged COVID-19. But although there, are, uh, there is considerable sense of crisis throughout the industry, Pintech, represented by digital finance, which is untech by nature, is growing uh, faster than any other industry and is believed to be one of the leading sectors under the fourth industrial revolution. And Korea and Vietnam and Vietnam Korea are increasingly working together in many industries. Vietnam is one of the important partners of Korean government's new southern policy and is also number one country in Korea's trade, investment, human exchange among the 10 ASEAN uh, countries. Uh, so we hope that this partnership and exchange will expand into financial industry of both countries, especially in the FinTech area by the cooperation of uh, FinTech and financial companies of two countries. Korea's FinTech due to the efforts of fintech companies, a steady uh, fintech activation of policy of uh, FAC Korea is rapidly developing in every financial market, including banking, capital market, insurance, and uh, nearly every uh, area of finance market. Especially in January of this year, uh, the Data Theory Act was passed uh, by the Korean National Assembly, and the data economy era in Korea began. So we expect fintech companies more focused on technology, so-called tech pin or uh, fintech enabler will increase, and convergence of fintech and uh, infrastructure technology, so-called ABCDI, AI, cloud, uh, big data, uh, blockchain, uh, uh, IoT, etc., will speed up. And also we hear that Vietnam fintech is very rapidly uh, developing, uh, including payment, transport, P2P, and Vietnam financial government is preparing for financial innovation. And so the State Bank of Vietnam, SVB, is supposed to launch the Pintel regulatory sandbox system in uh, next year. We expect Vietnam Pintel has very big potential to grow and so strongly hope active cooperation of both sides. Uh, for example, there are two Korean private Pintel labs opened and operated in Hanoi. Uh, Xinan, future lab of Xinan, 
uh, group since uh, 19, uh, 2016. And Moody Financial Group, uh, uh, Pintel Lab, has been operating uh, Dino Lab uh, from uh, to, uh, 2019. We think Korean and Vietnam fintech and financial institution uh, can fully uh, use this uh, Pintel Lab. Once again, uh, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all Vietnam uh, Embassy, uh, Vietnam Silicon Valley, and other fintech related uh, personnel and companies who are uh, joining this uh, webinar. And also, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, our second uh, Korea Vietnam, Vietnam Korea webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Yushin Jung for your welcoming remarks. Next, please welcome Tori Pek Nog, head of a counselor from Embassy of the Vietnam in Korea. Please welcome her for her congratulatory remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Science and Technology Office of Vietnam Embassy in South Korea, I would like to express my sincere congratulations on Event Vietnam Korea Online FinTech webinar. And my gratitude to all organizers to host the uh, online seminar with the term Vietnam Korea FinTech Business Partnership in post COVID-19. Vietnam and Korea has nearly 30 years establishing diplomatic relations. Vietnam Korea relations have made great progress and has uh, had many strong developments in all fields uh, politics defense, security, economy, investment, science and technology, culture and tourism. Korea is currently Vietnam's third largest trading partner. Uh, bilateral turnover mm -hmm. in uh, 2019 reaches uh, 66.7 billion US dollar. Regarding its foreign investment in Vietnam, in uh, 2019, Southern Korea was the leading country in foreign investment in Vietnam with a, a registered capital of 7.9 billion US dollars. In this uh, first uh, industry revolution era, our cooperation in aiming at science and technology fuel for social economic development. Vietnam and South Korea has uh, also achieved many results in science and technology cooperation. This is also the era of the fintech market. According to the analysis the data of the organization, the Vietnamese fintech market hit 4.4 billion US dollars in 2017 and is uh, expected to reach, um, reach 7.6 billion US dollars in uh, 2020. This shows the high growth potential in the fintech sector in Vietnam. The Vietnamese government already has a policy to support the startup from new technology. At the same time, the government has also solution to support the training to increase the high-tech human resources in the coming time to meet the shortage of power man, manpower in the, this field. As you, as you know, the Korea's fintech industry is expected to expand cooperation and has short stronger economic ties with the East Asian counterparts, especially with the Vietnam. The cooperation between the fintech center Korea and Vietnam Silicon Valley Wind brings many investment opportunities for business of the two countries. Due to the COVID-19, the unseen obstacle is the business cooperation with the Korea in Vietnam. However, FinTech is represented by digital and untech. It will fasten the digitalization and new business of parallel in challenging times. I look forward to seeing more and more Korean business in investing successful in Vietnam. Congratulations again on holding the event Vietnam Korea Online FinTech webinar 2020. My very to the event and I wish you good health, happiness and success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councillor, for your, your congratulatory remarks. Now, now let us begin our presentation from Vietnam side. First presentation will be done by Mr. Gibson from Vietnam Silicon Valley. His presentation will deliver 
about the gateway to Vietnam's Silicon Valley. Please welcome Gibson Song for his presentation. Hello, I'm Gibson, Song, a partner at VSV Capital based in Hanoi. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Yu Xin Zhang for inviting Vietnam Silicon Valley to co-host this event. And many thanks to Councillor Ngoc from Vietnam Embassy in Seoul for the warm welcome. VSB started out as an accelerator. We have invested in over 50 startups since 2015. In 2019, VSB started the Venture Capital Fund to invest in pre-seed to Series A stage companies. VSB is also a gateway to Vietnam for many foreign investors and startups wanting to enter Vietnam market. We work closely with the government agencies, such as Korea Institute for Startups and Entrepreneurship Development and Enterprise Singapore, as well as global conglomerates such as Lotte to meet their startup related needs. Like many excellent organizations, VSB's most valuable asset is its people. Between myself and my partner, Ling Han, we bring almost 20 years of experience investing and mentoring startups. Our advisors, Mr. Wu Han and Mr. Hui Zong, bring decades of leadership experience from both private and public sectors. Mr. Han is currently CEO of a major Vietnamese bank, and Mr. Zong is a former deputy minister of planning and investment. While Mr. Zong was at the ministry, he played an instrumental role in laying out the foundation of Vietnam startup ecosystem. VSB is playing an active role in advancing fintech in Vietnam. In 2018, together with the State Bank of Vietnam and Vietnam International Bank, VSB hosted Vietnam Fintech Challenge. The event brought together policymakers, financial and academic institutions, startups and investors from all over the world to share the stat status quo of Vietnam's fintech and to suggest the future directions. In 2019, Vietnam's top fintech companies competed head-to-head -head at Fintech Summit, which was sponsored by Welcome Financial Group of Korea. Hawking took the first prize, taking home a sizable check. As some of you may, know, may already know, Hawking is a proud portfolio of VSV. Also in 2019, VSV and Fintech Center Korea signed an important MOU to foster technology collaboration between the two countries and to accelerate market penetration. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our Vietnamese speakers. Mr. Fong Le was a deputy director at the State Bank of Vietnam overseeing FinTech. Earlier this year, Mr. Le left the State Bank to join private sector. I'm most delighted that Mr. Le was able to join today as a speaker to share his insights. The other speakers, Mr. Ronald Le and Mr. Zhong Dang, are top-notch Vietnam's entrepreneurs. I invited them not only because they have exciting business models, but also because their services can greatly impact Koreans and Korean businesses in Vietnam. So I hope all Korean attendees will pay careful attention. Thank you all, and I hope you will enjoy the seminar. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs, for your presentation and introduction. Now, let us begin with uh, Mr. Fong Lev. He is an expert and uh, ex-deputy uh, director from State Bank of Vietnam. His presentation is about Vietnam's fintech regulatory landscape. Let us welcome him, um, Lev Fong Lev, for his presentation. Fong Lev, please go on. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Fang, an expert and a former SPV regulator. I was a deputy director at the um, Monetary Policy Department in the State Bank of Vietnam. So just a correction, minor correction, I was not uh, in charge of the fintech development at the State Bank of Vietnam, but uh, my work was linked to very much to, to fintech and I was sent, um, I, I took part in a program at the MAS, uh, the Central Bank of Singapore, uh, studying the fintech uh, sandbox. So um, that's why I'm here to uh, such an order for me to share insight into Vietnam's fintech regulatory landscape with you today. Um, so let me first share the screen with you. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so uh, in Vietnam right now, fintechs are seen as part of an, a wider national strategy uh, for uh, for digital economy, which is rooted from, I think, a strong will within the party and the government for a second Doi Mới, which is an upgrade of the Doi Mới reforms made back in 1986, if you may, you may know. It is leveraged on two pillars, uh, so the so-called Industrial Revolution 4.0, and second one uh, being the financial inclusion strategy. Uh, the first one, I would think it's uh, more like a supply side, Uh, initiative and the second one uh, from the demand side. Um, here you can see some uh, some representatives of the numerous long-term plans and scheme that Vietnam has released over the last years. Uh, just uh, for for the sense of uh, what the Vietnamese government has make, uh, making effort into this area. Um, so. Let's talk about the regulator, regulators and what they're doing right now. Um, since uh, since high-end solutions are less visible, uh, fintech in Vietnam has been so far basically limited to payments and banking practices, making SPV, the State Bank of Vietnam, the Central Bank of Vietnam, by far the most important player in this area. Uh, I, I define them into three categories. Uh, the first one, uh, are the promoters, uh, including SPV, who regulate uh, banking practices, um, anti-money laundering and uh, terrorism financing. Uh, the second one and the MPI, the Ministry for um, Investment and um, um, Planning. Uh, they are doing the general uh, wider strategy of the digital economy. And the third one, uh, The third one, the MIC, the Ministry for Information and Communications, they're doing uh, the governing ICT and telecom. And the supporters are the MOF, the Ministry of Finance, um, who covers insurance and capital markets uh, alongside with taxations and budget collection. Uh, the second one, uh, the Ministry of In Industry and Trade, who does e-commerce, uh, cons consumer protection and antitrust. And there are two in, I define as a gate checkers. They are MPS, the Ministry for Public Security, who are concerned about uh, anti-money laundering and terrorism financing and social or order and security. And uh, MOJ, the Ministry of uh, Justice, who are tasked with uh, regulatory checking. Uh, they're making sure all the uh, documents and laws are, uh, has a good background, so legal backgrounds, and they also tasked with upgrading the, the legal system as well. Um, so here are some key upcoming regulations. In this year, we are expect uh, an upgrading uh, editions of uh, SPV Circular 23. Uh, When this, this one is released next, uh, it will formally allow EKYC in the banking system and payment businesses. Um, the second one is an upgraded edition of the government decree 101, which is uh, been, uh, I mean, uh, it's in circulation within the government right now. This one has two, uh, two main points. Uh, it will expand the scope of international payment clearing to include e-wallets. So, for example, an, uh, right now, a Korean tourist coming to Vietnam, they cannot uh, spend uh, using their wallet, uh, Korean wallet, but uh, after this one is released, they can do so. Uh, and second one, they, it will allow banks to hire non-banks as the payment agents in order to make banking more inclusive. I think this one is a... a, a a big change to, to this landscape. So, I'm uh, sorry, uh, the, third, the third one is the, the government is uh, planning to introduce a PM decision on the pilot scheme for mobile money uh, in which SPV and MIC are working on to allow mobile phone accounts to make small sized uh, transactions targeting residents in suburban and remote areas. And the fourth one is uh, introducing a government decree on fintech regulatory involved, which is expected next year. Um, uh, um, 
I think this one um, we have. I, I don't have much uh, information about that, but I think this will it will take for some time because the, there are many things in this to be discussed. So I think over the last uh, several years and years to come, uh, some key terms uh, have have been and are affecting future regulations as well. So the first one is the, a change in uh, lawmaking approach. I would say. Uh, this has been a shift from a rule-based approach to a more principle-based approach, which is a, a good thing to have as well. Uh, meaning, uh, in the past, uh, uh, agencies tend to, to define all the rules that uh, banks and payments uh, intermediaries can do, uh, but now they're shifting to, towards um, uh, a stance that they will, also, also, you know, they will only give the guidelines and the uh, banks or the regulated will uh, do all they can to manage the risks. Uh, second is the vision. Um, the vision right now in Vietnam is that fintech is seen as the means, but not the end to digital banking. So um, this is crucial for, for, for banks to invest in digital banking right now. And the third one is a change in the government in 2021 may uh, affect regulatory progress. Um, for opportunities, I would say uh, there are some key, the key things to look at uh, now and for maybe several years to come. Uh, first is that uh, the government is working on uh, uh, regulating the digital banking, uh, digital lending. Um, and a report is coming next in 2021. Uh, and second is the growing demand for wealth management and advisory. Um, this one is very interesting because the given, uh, given the, the wealth management in Vietnam is very um, underdeveloped right now, but the middle class is growing. So the lack of uh, a professional, highly professional uh, wealth management industry in Vietnam may uh, create room for, for tech company to tap in uh, and, and and do the wealth management, management, management services uh, on a tax basis. Uh, the third one is that the government has upgraded um, some, um, some infrastructure uh, to, to facilitate the digital economy, namely the national data, the public services, uh, the many portals, data portals and public service portals uh, within uh, last year and this year. So I think this is the, uh, very bright sized uh, for, for, for the future of fintech. And lastly, um, uh, the banks in Vietnam right now uh, invest seriously in digital banking, uh, whatever they define to be, but they are, this, there seems a, a race to, 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 uh, to get in the digital banking and uh, banks uh, invest very heavily on this. So that's all for my presentation right now and uh, your uh, feedback and inquiries, uh, inquiries are uh, very much welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Fong Lei, for your presentation on Vietnam's fintech regulatory landscape yes. and business opportunities. Okay, Q and A session will be followed by after all the presentation. So okay. next presentation will deliver by Mr. Rona Le from uh, Hawking. Send, save, invest globally. Rona, are you ready for your presentation? Yes. Uh, yes, please go on. We can share your screen here. Sure. Okay. Can you folks see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, Invited me to the event. Thanks, thanks a lot to uh, Mr. Gibbs, uh, Dr. Ji Shin Song, and uh, Vietnam Embassy in Korea. And uh, today, I, I will probably to uh, introduce to you uh, our fintech uh, solution. So, uh, in the visions, we are the uh, cross-border financial service platform uh, by leveraging on digital remittances. So, we want to help people send money, safe, and invest globally. And we would like to emphasize that we fully regulated. We want to follow rules, regulations, and, uh, and in everywhere we go. So this is a 100% legitimate uh, platform that we want to do. 
And um, fintech is something that is very sensitive in terms of regulation. So today is, I'm very proud and very uh, uh, excited to share with you folks and would love to uh, learn from you folks on how to regulate this business all over the world. Uh, basically, we help people manage money globally. So we help people send funds uh, instantly with the lowest cost. Right, so we cover uh, several countries where Vietnamese are living around, such as Singapore, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, U.S., Canada, Australia, Europe, to Vietnam and other countries. And we're proud to say that we are one of the very few players in the market that we have to facilitate funds out of Vietnam. So we have people pay, pay bills and invoices, such as tuitions and uh, some other uh, living expenses for children in Korea and U.S. with just a few clicks. So we work uh, closely with banks and uh, regulators as well as, as well as the fintech enterprise and uh, financial institutions. So today, you know, I will hope that uh, with a very strategic partnership between the two countries, uh, Vietnam and Korea, I would love to, to figure out some strategic partnership with the financial institution in Korea who have now present in Vietnam. So we hope to, to act as a bridge to build the uh, cross-border uh, ecosystem in terms of payment, investment between the two countries. And uh, last but not least, we also uh, help people send funds, uh, uh, save money. So you know that Vietnam is one of the very fast growing e economy in the, in the world, right? So uh, in, in, for example, in Singapore, if you leave funds in Singapore or some other country, you earn less than 1% of the annual interest. But if you leave funds in Vietnam, we hope to, to bring some investment to Vietnam and, and at least you make at least 6.5 to 7.5 interest. And uh, as, our, as my estimation, there's about $140 billion right now sitting in Singapore without any purpose from the Singaporeans and a normal citizen over there. So we hope that we can bring this such a fund to Vietnam and help the economy and also uh, help people make an extra income by putting the money in the deposit saving in Vietnam. And, you know, you know this uh, cross-border payment is, uh, is an old age problem. And uh, there's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of uh, compliance and uh, many intermediary in, 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 in between. So what we do is we, we try to build the, uh, the system that interoperable with all sorts of businesses, banks, uh, money transfer traders to bring down the cost, right? So now with the internet, with the uh, digital banking solutions, like what Unform mentions, Vietnam has heavily banks, Vietnam banks heavily invested in digital banks. So we hope that with regulation, with the open API, with the uh, much more sandbox coming up, we hope to partner up with different banks and, le and leveraging on the, a, a, a better infrastructure to move on in and out easily for investors or people. So what's so special about us, right? We, we, we much very different from those uh, money transfer operators around the world. You know, we're very much different from Western unions, transfer wise, remittly or some other players because we, we have people, we're not only doing the cross-border transfer, we want to leverage on the digital remittances to have people pay bill pay invoices overseas easily, right? And we do build a, a very transparent system with the real-time tracking and alerts, right? And, and last but not least, is we, we, fully regulate, uh, we fully regulated and we want to follow 100% uh, uh, this a legal channel. So we don't entertain uh, uh, those kind of like gray or black market channel and things like that. So we 100% follow rules and uh, KYC and AML and CFT and all that and all the uh, legal terms uh, from the different central banks that we have to follow 100%. And, and, and the difference from us is we build a cross-border wealth management. So we want to uh, we we help people to arbitrage the opportunities from the emerging world, such as Vietnam and developed countries, such as Japan, Korea, US, Canada, Singapore, and, and, and other countries. So, so that is actually what we, 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 we are different from those uh, uh, fintech players in the market. And up to today, we're very proud that we, we work with a lot of, uh, we work with a, 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 a several players who are regulated in Singapore, right, in, in Canada, in US, and also the uh, several banks in Vietnam. So we continue to develop the, the market, we continue to develop partnership to have people uh, uh, move funds and do various uh, investments uh, into Vietnam easily, right, and, and get the fund out easily without visiting the countries and things like that. So. You know, we, we, we are on the way there and very proud today that we hope that we can work with uh, uh, one of several uh, fin financial institutions or fintech enterprise in, uh, in Korea who want to do business in Vietnam 
and who do who, who do not want to set up a presence in Vietnam, so we can act as a local partner to uh, to contract with banks and and uh, and regulator and payment intermediary services or or different businesses in Vietnam to help you with the well, I mean to help you with various payment. So our team is very lean team. So we we work uh, we work uh, we, we build an international team. So we have uh, we have uh, uh, engineers. I'm a, I myself a zero entrepreneurs. I do various businesses and I live in, the, in different country before. I spent 25 years of my life living in Singapore and uh, six years in the U.S. So see I see things and I see the the gap between the, the emerging world and and, and developed world. Besides, I have a solid team in terms of. Uh, 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 engineering, right? Basically, we are most Vietnamese, right? Who born in Vietnam and who live overseas, and we have a very uh, solid partner in terms of compliance and as well as the uh, the partnership around the world, right? And uh, we have two partners uh, recently. They are senior advisor. They are they are the university uh, booth, Chicago booth uh, board governors, and very very experienced in financial industry in in the U.S. So they they are acting as a gate for us to partner up with different financial institutions or banks uh, around the world, right? And, and yeah, so the business model is very simple. So whoever in Korea who want to partner up, who, who want to do business in Vietnam, who they can contract us to be a, a, a partner so we can help them to facilitate the payment collection in now Vietnam, right? So we, and beside that, you know, if, if you want, uh, if any Korean people in, in, in stay in Korea and who want to do business in Vietnam, who want to facilitate funds or invest in the country, you know, welcome to connect me with me, right? And uh, I'm here to help. I'm here to collaborate. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you for your presentation about your uh, business and business opportunities in Vietnam and Korea. Okay, next presentation will be done by Nanotechnologies. Please welcome Zung Dang for his presentation title, Empowering Our Employees with the Financial Wellness Solution. Zung, are you there? Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Perfect, let me just put on the presentation mode. Okay. okay perfect. Thanks a lot, everyone, for making the time. It's a special thank you, Mr. Gibson, for the invitation to this conference. Uh, I think uh, unlike other um, very, very great startup, I think we're a very humble one, and we just get starting. Uh, and so I just want to present to you what kind of uh, problem we're solving right now, and maybe like looking your feedback uh, later on. So very, very briefly about the team. Uh, our team is small. We have 15 people right now. Uh, we started out this journey six months ago, so I'm the co-founder and CEO. My experience is used to be most of the time in B2C, and this is the first time I built some sort of like hybrid enterprise software and then a consumer app. But then the old team is very experienced building ERP and a consumer app as well. So hopefully this transfer into uh, our impact later on. Uh, so we do have, uh, we have raised fund and we do have support from uh, investors across the region and in the US. We also have uh, Mr. Math Plannery, he used to be the founder of Kiva.org, the largest microfinance platform in the world. And now he run and, and co-founded Branch, which is a micro-lending platform mainly in Africa and Southeast, uh, in Southeast Asia and India. Um, and also other folks on the board as well. So what are the problems we're solving? Uh, so I used to be in B2C a lot. And, you know, what I see the value creation of a B2C company, they transform a very painful experience into a seamless one. Now we live into an on-demand world and we live in in the sense that everything is almost instant. So we see, do see that in Vietnam there's still a lot of huge population, 25 million people on payroll, um, but they're now struggling because velocity of money out of pocket is now faster than the velocity of money in the pocket. I'm talking about folks who are at the lower rung of society, folks who actually work in factories, folks who work in coffee shops, there's a ton of them. And I think their life is struggling a lot. And now recently, in a couple of years in Vietnam, you probably heard there's a you know, plethora of Chinese lenders, Russian lenders, and a lot of companies open online lending, make the experience super easy, but they're charging people 500% APR. And so that put a lot of people under financial duress. And most people, uh, workers, uh, employ perhaps at your, uh, at your company as well. Now, when those folks because the velocity of money out is faster and velocity of meaning is fixed. 
what happened is during the month, they probably have some cash trap problem. So what do they do? Reliance on friends and family is on the decline as you have now moving towards nucleus family uh, society structure. Even credit card, the penetration is super low and there's not the use case that people who go buy stuff at the wet market can use and eat cash. And then the, the current pricing structure of credit card is exorbitantly high for them. And then what else left for them? They go to loan shop, they go to pawn shop. In Hanon or Chimun City alone, there's 5,000 loan, uh, you know, a pawn shop. And then online lending right now, there's a couple of hundred websites with the monthly traffic, about 800,000 applications. And be mindful of the fact that those applications, those loans, are like very short term and charging 500% APR, which to be honest, I don't think that is something that uh, as a social security kind of uh, perspective is allowed. Mm -hmm. I think it's get attention in media, but I don't think everyone is solving this. Now, banks are not solving this problem because literally they make no money from this. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to adopt a model that worked really, really well in the US, UK, and Latin America. Basically, this allows the employee to have access to their own wage. Now, let's just say today is like the 5th of, um, of September and people have worked four days. So whenever they need the cash for the daily living, you, they have access to it because they have earned it. It's just, you know, it's just being locked until the end of the month, right? So what we do is we allow people to have access to this in the cheapest way and fastest way. And this is without shame because every single time you ask as employee, as a manager, as your boss for a salary friends, what you have, you have shame, the guilty feeling that somebody will judge you. And I think that's the biggest barrier and you know that a lot of people don't use it. So what we do see is not just a demand that is so obvious and nobody is doing this, but at the same time, we see that the demand that we see is only very latent. It's only the tip of the iceberg that we see. Like we talk to a lot of employers and roughly only 2% of people asking for that every month, but those employees who are asking for a salary advance, these people are tender people because they have been working there long enough to overcome the shame factor, the shame feeling to ask for those things but they have earned it. So why do they should feel shameful about it? So the way we do it uh, is the first act, uh, the first product is to early wage access. And then we also allow those companies, those employers to help employees to track the ship, uh, track their earning. Because a lot of things uh, on digital has not been adopted yet. You may be surprised, but sometime, and actually a lot of time, workers only see their, their ship and their earning at the end of the month. And then a lot of problems happen in between and they only have the last day of the month to, to dispute, which causes a lot of like a process inefficiency, both for employer and employee. And what ultimately we want to do is we want to build that kind of platform within the company to help the employee. Most of them are poor. Most of them undereducated to have access to those kind of information and knowledge that help build the financial skill, which I do think is a critical skill for everyone in the 21st century going forward. So how this kind of service will benefit the, the employee? I, I think, you know, I think I'll go skip straight to the next page, but I want to leave a point here that people actually love the service. Uh, they never seen this before. It is basically something that is too default, but a lot of people are not asking for it. So when we do this uh, pilot for a couple of first months, we see uh, actually employee love it. Uh, you know, in two months, 50% employee that we have pilot with have used it. They withdraw their earn wage more than once per month. You can see the shaded green up there. There's a lot of people use eight times per month, so you can see the demand. The left-hand side uh, chart on the on the left, the lower-hand side, you can see that this is our transaction that we see toward the end of the month. And our hypothesis is very simple. People don't earn a lot. And so toward the month, the cash drop, so they need to have access to this. Otherwise, they have to go to loan chart. So overall, we uh, I think we're quite happy with the experience and very positive feedback from the user. And then for the uh, employer as well, right? That make no sense if they don't have benefit from this. So what we help employers is help them reduce attrition, increase the inflow of applicants because this is a new kind of benefit that nobody's doing. And then we will make it seamless to integrate with uh, any kind of ERP or HRM software that our, our startup do most of the work for them. And so in terms of economics, I think this is a complicated chart. I just want to give you a part here that uh, this model is B2B2C. So the CAC is low and the retention is great. And then also because we do a deduction as source from the salary so that the, the risk cost is very, very low. It's been proven in other market that on average, the online lenders have about 10 to 15% write-off and our model proven in other market have roughly 0.2 to 0.3% write-off. So we make it more economically sound. Um, 
And I think lastly, I want to say that uh, we are like a, um, we're not competing with banks. I think as Anh Phong mentioned earlier, uh, the model on agent banking in Vietnam, which is gaining traction because banks realize that they don't have enough distribution to serve all of the underbank customers. So I think the agent banking model is in conception right now in Vietnam. I think hopefully it will pass regulation this year, but our model is not competing with bank. Our model is actually how extended you know, the, the, uh, the capability of bank product to cover the population that's underserved. At the same time, we'll build the ecosystem within employers and employee to what the better, like more loyalty, more retention, and I think like, you know, better benefit for employees. So uh, this is a briefly our model in short, uh, hopefully to receive your feedback uh, in the upcoming session. Thank you, John, for your presentation. It's very interesting, and we can discuss more after the Q&A session, at the Q&A session. Now, let us go on to Korean side presentation. First presentation will be done by uh, K-Growth, uh, Mr. Dongwook Chap, Dongwook Park. His presentation is on fintech-oriented investment platform. It, this will give a Korea side uh, uh, investment uh, overall view to Vietnam side. Okay. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, my name is Dong Park, and uh, I'm senior manager at Korea Group Investment Corporation, and I'm in charge of managing fintech innovation side. Uh, let me share the screen first. So today I'm going to briefly introduce our fund and uh, I'd like to propose a co-working opportunity between fintech players in Vietnam and Korea. So let me start off with the snapshot on Korean finance industry. The sector has been growing since its market opening in 1990s. Now there exist six major banks ranked among the top 100 global banks. And the country has already transitioned to a virtually non-cash society as of 2017. Also, the insurance and the stock market are posing uh, meaningful positions in, in the global market as well. However, the intense competition and the small market size is forcing the bank to see and expand to, to the global market in Korea. Uh, let's uh, check out the number. Southeast Asian market, the ASEAN, has placed on the top priority among those outfounded financial players. Uh, the enormous size of the market, Southeast, Southeast Asian market, has attracted many numbers of financial players. As you see from the table on the left, over 50% of overseas subsidiaries are residing in Southeast Asian region. The Vietnam accounts 54 uh, we can see the high appetite for the Vietnamese market. At the same time, the fintech startups, both the number and the size of fintech startups in Korea, has seen a 30% figure over the last seven years. That uh, growing competition has forced those startups to look outside of the domestic market, and uh, many of them are aiming Vietnam. So in response to the demand for outbound expansion, we, Kago, have uh, launched a fund of funds platform dedicated to fintechs. Our save seven major banks, uh, banking groups has committed and participated in our platform. We divided the platform into two main vehicles. So we, as an investment manager, invest the two thirds of the capital to the VCs focusing on fintechs that includes Korean and local GPs uh, or Vietnamese GPs. The other one third will be uh, invested in the later stage and we will make an investment decision on this side. Since we work very closely with our LPs, the banking partners, the FinTech labs that are under the, the control ship of our LPs, we provide a comprehensive support for the FinTechs that are invested by our platform. So this slide is to help you recap the overall structure of our investment platform. Of the 130 million USD fund of funds capital, two thirds will be invested in early startups under the control ships of VCs through their uh, self-fund investment vehicles. And the other one third here 
will be invested to the later stage companies by our own investment team. Uh, up to 20% can be invested in non-Korean VC funds or non-Korean fintech startups, mostly to uh, those residing in Southeast Asia market. Uh, this is uh, to better fulfill the mandate from our editors. So here we illustrated the central investment structure. How uh, we can bring forward the values to Korean and Vietnamese players in fintech scene. Of uh, course, it is possible for us to invest in Vietnamese fintech startups along with local bases, Vietnamese bases, to understand the market. Uh, we can help them to foster a strategic alliance or partnership with Korean banks that are already have that already have their Vietnamese approbation or we can introduce startups that are already included in our portfolios tech, tech startups to vietnamese financial institutions or super lab creators with a massive b2c client base so most of these startups already have the use case in korean finance system uh, therefore they can enhance the various functions in banking cycles to the hawaii joint integration So here is the summary of the benefits we can offer to the VCs or startups being funded by us. Here for the VCs, VCs can benefit from not only the capital commitment from us, but also there will be a, a strategic opportunity to tap Korean LPs or major GPs. As per the startups, um, our investment won't be limited to uh, one-time funding. We do have platform to invite co-investors who are very much interested in Vietnamese market. These investor pool won't be limited to our banking partners, but uh, it will also include the major Korean GPs who have an expertise in cross-border uh, value trans trans creation or transactions. So we believe these set of follow investment will be very beneficial for the startups wishing to scale up their business. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, this, let's come briefly to the overview of our firm, uh, Korea Group Investment Corporation. We are one of the biggest fund of funds investment firm, providing over 5% uh, of total VC capital in Korea. Since our inception in 2016, we have launched over 20 fund of funds. And through our fund investment platform, we have funded over uh, 185 VC and PE funds as of the end of August. Yeah, back to FinTech platform. We have launched the FinTech Innovation Fund uh, in December last year. Uh, since then, we have made direct investment to eight startups and funded two VC funds dedicated to FinTechs. We summarized the, the keywords of each company in hashtag format. So please let us know if you want to explore an opportunity to collaborate. We are in still we are still in search for the fintech startups or VCs who can uh, solve the real world problems in fintech financing. So please reach us if you wish to share your IR or IM materials. We will be uh, more than happy to discuss further. Uh, that's all from my presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tomo Park, from your presentation. Now we are on time, so let us go on to FinTube with your colleagues' uh, presentation on. Into this financial supply chain platform. Tikli, are you ready? You can go on. Hey, uh, my name is Tikli. I'm a CSO from Fintubi. Uh, let me share with you my um, presentation. Fintubi is founded in 2015 in Korea with a mission to support small and medium-sized enterprises by developing solutions for supply chain financing. Fintubi aims to be the leader of supply chain financing in solution in Southeast Asia. We have set up a um, Southeast Asian holding company in um, Singapore, and our first priority market is Vietnam. Fintubi is led by Sung Park, um, formerly managing director at Partner and uh, BCG. 
with 18 years of specializing in financial services. Our uh, management team is, has a deep understanding of finance and IT industries. So supply chain financing is a, a unique financial product that allows supplier to leverage buyer's credit. So for instance, SME supplier who might be looking at 20% APR from a savings bank could be getting something closer to 3% APR from first tier bank leveraging credit worthy uh, partner's credit. So on the other hand, on the bank side, um, you can provide uh, services to SME while managing your risk. So it's win-win for both sides. Despite the potential, um, supply chain financing is um, not very well developed in many parts of Southeast Asia. Um, we believe that Indonesia and, and, and Vietnam Indonesia is two countries with the biggest potential in terms of market and economic growth. Um, today, the size of the uh, factoring market in Vietnam, factoring also means, uh, is another word for account receivable based supply chain financing. So factoring market is about 0.2% compared to the GDP. If, if Vietnam can reach the level of Taiwan and China, we're looking at $4 billion USD market. <coughs> so digital transformation has been an important trend in financial services for years. An untapped aspect of the online based services has become a critical element of services. Fintopy provides SaaS based digital supply chain financing solutions to allowing a financial institution to launch product quickly and operate efficiently. Fintopy launched its account receivable based financing service product with Mira Asset in September 2019 and for Uri Bank in August 2020 in Vietnam. Fintopy plans to um, expand its factoring service in Vietnam and also introduce new product, which is early uh, payment solution for online market sellers in Vietnam. So let me talk to you uh, briefly about our journey into Vietnam and maybe um, some lessons we have learned. Um, so my journey to Vietnam began with um, visiting one of my friend's factory in Hanoi, supplying to Samsung Electronics. His factory was immaculately run and most of the people who worked there were seemed happy and full of hope. So I, I really began to start to believe in the manufacturing powers and uh, future of Vietnam. So I visited Vietnam more frequently and made some investment to uh, even some startups. Um, and then when I found out that my former boss and mentor, Samsung Park in BCG was also interested in Southeast Asia, I joined FinTB. And since then we've been developing Vietnamese market together. Um, so I started to make connections with the uh, startup ecosystem in Vietnam try to understand Vietnamese market. But I, I, through the experience, I learned that we need to be open and to difference in culture and regulations. And one thing that we really struggled with at the beginning was the regulatory requirement. As the supply chain financing is still infancy, there's lack of knowledge in the market about often what is allowed and what is not allowed with conflicting recommendations. So um, I think the lesson here is that not to give up so easily when you hear that someone that you cannot do something in Vietnam. You need to be persistent and you need to find um, solutions. And most of all, you need to talk to someone who is competent and, and, and experienced because um, depending on who you meet at the first, um, you may go to different, different directions. So be, being oriented from the, right from the start is actually very important. Um, and through the experience we had in the last few years, we learned to focus on what we're good at to define our service, customer base, and our product. Today, we uh, focus on partnership with financial institutions, which we believe is a winning solution. So um, Vietnam was our preferred choice of uh, um, entry in Southeast Asia for its uh, potential in growth um, of financial industry and rapid growth of economy and large presence of Korean corporate customers who's already using supply chain financing in Korea and looking for the solutions. So um, in our journey to Vietnam, we were supported by many institutions, including FinTech Center um, for developing the market and NIPA, who is graciously supplying our office space in Gyeongnam Tower in Hanoi. Um, so we have developed a, uh, we finally developed a solution that's optimized for our Vietnam and, 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 and for partners, significantly different from our original design in terms of process and the documentation needs. Uh, FinTB today is operating uh, factoring services in, in, um, in Vietnam for Mir Asset and Uri Bank. And we are 
looking to expand to different uh, partners. Um, there are some part partners we're speaking to in the pipeline, and um, we're also developing an exciting new product, which is a, a financial product for the online market sellers um, for global market. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your presentation, Jekuli, about your business journey to Vietnam and Korea. I hope you find a good partner in Vietnam. Okay. Now, let us go on to presentation with the finger winner, his business uh, uh, solution in Vietnam. Good afternoon, okay. yeah. good afternoon everyone. I'm Will and I'm a senior manager of Global Business Division from Finger Vina. First of all, I want to announce the key solutions of Finger Company and FinTech for people in the FinTech sector in Vietnam. The Finger is a specialized FinTech company established in 2000 by Mr. Binsu Park also provides its own system and operates that to banks in Korea, including digital banking and wearable banking also. The three uh, the main businesses are finger is uh, three. So one is a platform and second is solutions and third is commission. The core technologies are Republic of Korea's first patent technology. Uh, for scrap, uh, data scrapping, smart board banking, platform, and core fund management. Currently, they are used by many banks in Republic of Korea. Uh, for reference, the Seoul of Shinan Bank in Vietnam was also developed by Finger. Um, in addition to that, the Finger also have overseas remittance and 100% untaxed peer-to-peer loan platform too. Uh, recently, iSmart CMS, which can collect account information of the Vietnam's 10 banks, has been released as a Vietnam, Vietnamese version so that it is possible to manage management the accounts of Vietnamese banks in an integrated manner. So currently, 165 of the 210 employees are developers and 15 of the, 200, uh, of the 210 employees are researchers. As a result, Finger Company has developed the smartphone banking app of the Bank of Korea for the first time. Currently, the Finger Company is building and operating smartphone banking apps such as Xinan Bank, KB Booming Bank, and NH Nongyeo Banks, and many other banks too because there is only Finger's unique smartphone banking platform and frameworks. So the variously, so various finance company customers using the, our FinTech solution and service. Uh, so far, uh, I have introduced the status of the Finger's business and solutions. The Finger has already advanced to, to localize the Vietnam in 2015 and has three branches, office in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh, and Dana in Vietnam. And will be launched, we will be launched soon with the new O2 platform service, maybe after uh, finished the COVID-19. And we'll do our best to have more time to adv advancement of Vietnamese finance with Korea's mobile technology and banking know-how. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, due to the time limit, uh, let us go on to Q&A session right now. So we do have a lot of pre-questions from panelists, also from Korean audience and um, Vietnamese audience, so, okay. Chairman Dr. Yu Shin Jung, please go on with your Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, seven uh, presenters' distinguished uh, presentation. Because, uh, as moderator already said, because there is a, a, a very time uh, limited, I directly you know, ask of, uh, the presenter, uh, forgive me. Uh, because there is a, uh, this is a first webinar uh, between uh, uh, Vietnam and Korea, and uh, so many people 
uh, very interesting uh, fintech in two countries. So there are many uh, inquiries about uh, you know, fintech uh, of both countries. Um, first, from uh, Korean side, uh, Senior Manager Park. Senior Manager Park, I understand you hear many demands from Korean fintech. Uh, which you wanted to go to Vietnam and launch their business. Uh, particularly when launching, you know, the, the, the business in foreign country, there are a lot of you know, issues about, you know, regulation or uh, uh, something like that. Do you have any, uh, you know, the, the uh, inquiry? Oh, yes, I do have a question to Mr. Fong Lei. So there are many uh, fintech companies, Korean companies, who are wishing to penetrate into Vietnamese market and the first challenge they are facing is the, uh, the KYC process. So uh, I, we understand that so far only the face-to-face -face KYC process is allowed in Vietnam. And uh, you just mentioned uh, the Vietnamese government is planning to launch the eKYC system within this year. Could you give us a little bit more details on, uh, uh, on the plan that government is planning? To, to ease the KYC process. Yes, uh, so the K KYC actually, uh, so in Vietnam, uh, the legal making process is like this. The government will uh, issue some, uh, some decree uh, allowing some, 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 something to be done. And then the, the ministry, in this case, SPV, the Spain of Vietnam, will uh, be issuing a detailed uh, uh, circular on that. So, uh, for EKYC, the government already issued a decree. Um, I, I remember decree 86 or 87 uh, in uh, late 2019. And now the SPV is working on uh, uh, its uh, own circular, circular 23, to formally allow banks and businesses to do EKYC. Uh, actually, they can still up to up to 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 do face-to-face -face KYC as well, but yeah, it's allowed. And that circular is expected uh, probably this month or maybe uh, uh, by the year. I'm not so sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Fong. Uh, I think you know the many of fintech, Korean fintech participating in this webinar. Uh, uh, very glad to hear that. Uh, as you know, uh, Korea, many Korean uh, the corporations uh, have been uh, uh, right now in Vietnam and uh, cooperated with uh, many uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, corporations, including uh, the big company and uh, SME, small and medium sized enterprises. But we hear uh, still, there are many, uh, you know, the, the issues or demand from SME in terms of financing. So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice President, Mr. Lee, uh, uh, I think you are uh, working on that, uh, you know, the, uh, by use of those uh, business model. Clearly, you know the, the uh, SME financing. Do you have any uh, inquiry about you know the, the Vietnam? Question. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, so um, I guess uh, it, it's as I said, we are working on um, providing solutions for the uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, and the approach we're taking is um, that because data is not very available for SMEs. Um, one of the reasons, one of the ways to supply financing to SMEs while overcoming these challenges is looking at the partner's credit, which is, you know, partner may be a big, large company with credit worthy history. So it's a lot easier for the bank to, to give loans based on this, uh, this method, which is uh, uh, very efficient for all of, all of us, all of the parties involved. And uh, in Korea, this has been recognized, and government is giving uh, support or, or the push to this uh, to development of this industry and some regulatory uh, um, environment that a lot, that that really pushes the large large company to um, to support the SME suppliers, which is um, 
giving some guidelines in terms of the uh, account receivable days and things like that. So I was wondering uh, if uh, what what does the Vietnamese government think about the the importance of or development uh, of the supply chain financing sector in the future, which is the uh, what we're involved in. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is for me, right? I yes. think um, you know the uh, even though it is a little bit different from business model, I think uh, you know the uh, in terms of uh, SME financing, uh, really to SME financing, I I think in uh, June, the CEO June, uh, even though uh, you know the 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 pin to uh, pin to bid business model is a bit B two B, your model is uh, probably like you know C two C, but. Uh, in terms of you know the helping uh, uh, the SMEs financing, I uh, probably, uh, I think uh, you, you're the right person to answer. No? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll try my best, and then I will leave the uh, the crux to Mr. Fong because I think he knows much better than I do. But I'll I'll take the first cry. Um, so I think there's a couple of things um, I want to discuss here. So number one, I think there's a government direction. We do want to support SME, and we do want to really amplify the effectiveness of supply chain finance. Uh, I don't know you know, but in Vietnam, I think the um, the day sales standing right now in Vietnam roughly is about 72 days. So allowing a lot of SME are struggling for that. Um, so yes, directionally wise, uh, government want to support. I think in the COVID time, the government actually encouraged commercial bank to land. I think, and then they want to back it. But I think the decision to land is still with commercial bank. And so what I heard is a lot of SME in Vietnam still don't get the funding even now the risk sort of um, the the interest rate is lower but because the underwriting is the same and so nobody no like no commercial bank want to take that on their balance sheet at, especially at this moment so i think sme at the moment is is in some trouble and i think a lot of solution that could help either access to funding in an innovative way and also cutting the costs of operation and writing for bank is really appreciated uh, so that's the second thing. The third one is uh, a lot of banks uh, in Vietnam in the past five to seven years have adopted a new way to underwrite an SME because as you know, the books on SME are not totally clean or transparent. And so a lot of banks have adopted uh, multiple ways to do that. I think one is the way that uh, Duke have mentioned. Okay, so we want to take the invoices from very, very uh, high credit uh, you know, buyer and so that's one way to verify it. The other way I've seen other banks have been doing is to underwrite you in QCA. Uh, it's like a, it's an acronym for qualitative credit underwriting. So then we look at the, all the numbers, we look at uh, factors like, yeah, you have very, very good buyers as one way to do it. But I don't think that can solve the whole problem of full underwriting and distribution uh, and cost to serve. I think the, the key word here is also cost to serve because SME obviously is a subscale so the RM model, relationship manager model, haven't been working quite well in Vietnam. So banks are kind of reluctant in most of the sense. So I do feel that a lot of like company uh, like Fin2B, or I think in, uh, in, in Vietnam right now, there's three other regional players coming in called Validus, there's funding societies and then Aspire. What they're trying to do is to act as a conduit between the bank balance sheet and the underwriting and on the distribution process to cut down on operation costs to make it win-win for everyone. But again, my knowledge in this field are not that very, very deep, so I'll leave Mr. Fong to build more on it. Uh, Mr. Fong, uh, can you add yes. this, uh, to that? Sir? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Zoom. I think that from the government perspective, they are very much uh, keen on uh, uh, promoting uh, lending to, to uh, SME as well. Uh, because the, the, the ultimate purpose is growth, so there's no point uh, blocking uh, lending to SME as well. Uh, as long as you uh, go to this market and comply with uh, relevant uh, regulation, it's all okay. Even in, in, in situation where the regulation is not there, as long as you not uh, violate anything, it's okay. So I think from the government's perspective, the, the mentality is very quite, quite productive and uh, positive. Yeah. yeah. I think one, one more point I'd like to add is, uh, okay. if I, I, mean, I mean, correct me if not right, uh, and Fong, uh, I know that the sandbox for the, uh, uh, the FinTech sandbox is going to be happening in, 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 in 26 November this year, right? 
So uh, I probably know that these. I think uh, Zong mentioned a great point about the, the 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 invoice financing, right? They they actually track like Validus has has been doing quite a good job in terms of uh, uh, tractions for right now. Uh, they're foreign fintech and they they uh, they do a lot of P two P lending for SME. So I, I believe the uh, they they call it, they collaborate closely with the banks and the market is huge in terms of uh, the growth, right? As I know that it's, it's grown from three billion dollars up to like hundred hundred million dollars in terms of SME financing. So you know it's it's need an ecosystem. So I believe fintech uh, have a have a, have a cool space uh, when it comes to short term uh, invoice financing. You know that is something that I I, I just like to add and you know. Maybe Korean fintech can come and join the ecosystem and grow the SME together in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, the, you want to put that name? Vice President Lee, it's okay. Yeah, thank you so much for your answers, and it's very insightful. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, and I'm, then, getting, the, the, I'm getting more, uh, more energy from your, um, all your uh, encouragement. Thank you. As Noni said, uh, you know, uh, I hope you know, that. that uh, the cooperation between and not only you know the, the private uh, business side, but you know the uh, the government side, uh, Vietnam and Korea. Uh, if we uh, you know the, uh, make an effort together, huh? like uh, uh, for example, you know to uh, try to uh, you know to build up uh, the uh, pinta ecosystem in uh, the Vietnam together, uh, it'll be uh, much better. Huh? Okay, because um, uh, time is because of time issue. We go over to uh, you know the, the, the Vietnam side, uh, Vietnam side you know the ask about the Korean side and then the Korean uh, side answer. Uh, Jung, see <laughs> you, uh, Jung. I think I know the pin to P and your business model. Uh, even though it's a little, a little different, but you know the basically uh, seems to me. Uh, there are some some you know the uh, the, the components of the similar, uh, so I think uh, you know that we uh, want a chance to uh, what kind of you know the, the cooperation. Huh? Mm, if it is so, there are uh, very big potential uh, for synergy. Uh, can you start from a Vietnam side, you know, to ask about you know Korea? Yeah, I have a very brief question. So I've been actually, uh, I've been talking to Kakao team before, Kakao Bank, Kakao Pay and so on. And one of the things that I've seen is like tremendous growth of like FinTech in Korea. I think you have a few unicorn, you got uh, Kakao, you got, um, well, Line is one. I think Line is doing a lot of things. Toss, like uh, yes. and you, yeah, you have Toss as well. And so I'm just wondering like how like incumbent, like bank, traditional financial institution in Korea, uh, which I mean, no pun intended, but I, I do believe in Korea you got big ball and you're a big company and you have a lot of firepower. How do how do incumbent in in financial institution in Korea respond to the rise of fintech? Do they look at like this as competition? They look at this target to be acquired. How do they think about it? Uh, who can uh, you know the answer? Um, uh, as a, you know the the, the the private sectors and leader. Uh, you I guess uh, I guess maybe I can take a step at it. So, um, so I think the background of this um, the growth of fintech there is uh, there was government and government has encouraged the development of fintech for um, as uh, as and in the background and it has it's encouraged the um, a lot of companies to to, to collaborate. So. Say um, you talked about the cacao and all this emerge, emergence of the large fintech companies maybe competing with banks, um, but bank did not um, sit still. So they were also developing a solution that's convenient um, for to to uh, uh, compete with some of the fintech companies. But on, on the on, but at the same time, to develop the services, they were collaborating with fintech companies too to as part of. Um, technology. They did not develop all the technology in house. So there was an element of of sub, to competition as well as as the collaboration with fintech companies. That's one aspect. 
Um, I mean, in, in, that's just maybe B2C TC space, but um, for instance, for us, it's B2B space. Um, we also collaborate with the financial institutions. Um, so the, basically the, uh, the mind of um, large financial institutions here is that they don't want to develop everything in house. So we're kind of us providing a solution for the uh, financial institutions here. They also want us to help them to, to enter a Southeast Asian market, which is another form of collaboration. Um, so that's, um, there's, so, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on, competition as well as collaboration. Um, and, and one good about, one thing good is that there is a healthy ecosystem um, that, that um, and, and, and the large financial institutions are open-minded. And, and also I'd like to thank the uh, FinTech uh, um, Center in Korea who has been very encouraging and also, um, you know, the, has been a brick, brick bridge between the government and, and the financial sector. So um, they're doing a good job. <laughs> Um, and so I, I'm very positive about the eco healthy ecosystem that's being developed here. Not only, as, as you say, um, the response, but it, it's not only a competitive response. That's, um, that's my view. It's okay, Jung. Vice <laughs> uh, President Lee, uh, you're, you're not saying uh, because uh, we are here, uh, <laughs> representative of the PT Center, right? Korea. Right? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Uh, we are trying to, in the best effort, you know, to, to help, uh, you know, the, the FinTech uh, enterprise uh, to do business with, uh, you know, the uh, Korean financial institution, big companies, right? And kind of a role over in a bridge between uh, not only you know the uh, financial institution and uh, you know the Peter companies but you know uh, public side and the you know, private side as well uh, mind if I uh, add one thing to the point that uh, June raised okay thank you so, yeah yeah so yeah the point you may you may be so one of the biggest concern of our legacy bank and um, that's one reason why they have participated in our fund platform uh, the first mandate, the, the largest, biggest mandate, even from our LPs, is to make up a uh, connection between fintech startups and the traditional legacy uh, banks in Korea. And that's why we are trying to try our best to, to uh, uh, deep dive into the market, uh, model, business model of the fintechs and uh, trying to uh, make a connection between traditional banks and fintech startups. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Senior Manager Park. I, I, yes, you know, the uh, K Growth Fund as an investor is, in the, is a big shot uh, in, help, in terms of helping, you know, the uh, Korean FinTech as well. Uh, and um, is there any other uh, question from a bit of size? Uh, uh, maybe this question is for you, Dr. Chung. Um, so um, uh, this question is very uh, relevant maybe for Hawking. Uh, so uh, my question is, does the open API policy in Korea allow foreign technology platform to be powered by Korean-based fintech or institutions to facilitate B2B a C2C funds transfer out of Korea? That's uh, one part. Uh, this is a multiple part question. And my second question is, does the foreign uh, technology platform need to have a physical presence in Korea to work with uh, the Korean fintechs or institutions? And uh, if uh, the answer is yes, uh, does this Vietnam uh, platform need to set up a company uh, in Korea? or can they just uh, have some partnership with someone? And if uh, they, uh, they can just work with some Korean partners, well, who do you think are uh, the ideal partners to work with for Vietnamese uh, uh, technology platforms? Yes, uh, as far as I know, I the first one, first part of the question is, 
open API in Korea is the, uh, now in the first, first step. And so the number of the participating, uh, participating companies are uh, limited. Uh, right now up to 72, including uh, 18 banks and um, uh, 40, uh, 54 uh, the, uh, fintechs. Uh, and uh, for the time being, I think you know, it is highly likely that uh, it will be allowed only to domestic uh, financial companies uh, or financial uh, IT companies, uh, so-called you know, tech. And, but I think in the second phase, the scope of financial institutions and fintech companies will be expanded. Uh, for example, a financial institutions are expect to uh, uh, saving, uh, up to saving companies uh, saving banks and um, you know, the fintech companies uh, to meet uh, some requirements. The second uh, part of your question, uh, I think it's yes, it's, uh, but uh, the human and the physical conditions are necessary. Uh, but uh, right now, because of the physical conditions of uh, you know, the cloud base in Korea, it's most, so uh, the, the barrier uh, has been much relieved. Uh, as a condition for uh, example, uh, if Vietnam you know, companies enter uh, Korea, uh, there are many, uh, I think I know many uh, payments or uh, you know, the, 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 uh, transport companies uh, are related. So I think uh, you know, foreign exchange trading law uh, is very important. So I think uh, the foreign exchange trading export and uh, you know, the IT and uh, computer exports are needed. And uh, it doesn't have to be a local corporation. I think you know, the, a branch uh, uh, is also possible. Um, but uh, because it is a foreign company, I think that there are many uh, difficulties, not only language based, but you know, the cultural based. So I uh, strongly recommend you know, uh, your companies to uh, uh, cooperate with you know, Korean FinTech or Korean financial institution. Banks, uh, you know, the, as you know, are the, uh, safe. Um, but uh, if we want to um, cheap and good, <laughs> Cheap and good, uh, you know the, uh, the companies. I think uh, there are many, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, good uh, fintech companies. And um, the more detail, but more detail, I inquire uh, you know, the Korean uh, government side because you know uh, they have more, more uh, information about that. I uh, uh, inform you later. It's okay to you, Dr. Song. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, there are some, uh, you know, the comments from uh, the audience. Uh, we have, uh, at this moment, we have, uh, you know, many uh, Korean fintech company, uh, you know, the representatives and the you know, Vietnam, uh, you know, the representatives. So, if you hear uh, this Q and A session, if you have so many uh, comments, uh, please, you know, the, uh, give a comments on uh, the PC. Okay. Uh, is any other question uh, you know, from Korean side and the Vietnam side? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie? Uh, oh, Chiu yeah. I have one question. Uh, this is maybe from right and before the question. Um, I heard the, some different culture and people characteristic between the Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh city people. So when I heard that maybe so some the fintech business also a little bit different between the two cities. So can you be uh, can you give me uh, some advice to uh, who some who person to join uh, who person to launch the Vietnam fintech market from the foreign side? Can I understand uh, you 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 say that uh, the business environment in Hanoi and uh, in Ho Chi Minh is a little bit a little bit or much different. Is it right? Okay. Who can uh, you know answer? At, uh, yes. Uh, Learning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Your okay, base is uh, where? Ho Chi Minh or ha Hanoi? I'm based in Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. Ho Chi Minh. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, Hanoi is the capital of uh, Vietnam. So when it comes to regulations, licenses, and things like that, when you, uh, you, you probably uh, need to work closely with people in Hanoi, right? 
and and uh, for for business wise for business developments uh, uh, consumerisms and and uh, and demand in the market if you want to penetrate vietnam market i believe for for business operations or uh, office uh, should rather be settled in, uh, in 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 ho chi minh city right because there's a this might be a little bit uh, easier for you to to do things in uh, in in Ho Chi Minh City, of course. But when you come to regulation, if you need to obtain licenses and things like that, are uh, basically partnership and relationship with people in Hanoi is is, is very important. Uh, yeah. So anyone who wanna add, and you know the, the culture is uh, is slightly different, but you know uh, right now the the country is pretty emerge. So. Um, uh, there's, I don't, I don't see there are many gaps, but uh, to go to market easier, I found, uh, you know, people in the in, in the south, um, maybe they may want to try your product as quicker as, uh, than people in, in 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 the north, right? So, so you know, that is uh, something I can add. Yeah. Chu Bujang Nim, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Che is okay. If you wanted to go to uh, you know the the, the uh, Ho Chi Minh and uh, launch your business, you know can uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Che, you know the um, uh, can uh, can you have uh, you know the advice from Aloni? <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Is there any other questions? Uh, Park Chai Nimi Nagasan Namune, a senior manager Park. You know, he's very busy, busy eh, at this moment. Okay. Uh, uh, we have one inquiry from our audience uh, regarding the EKYC on regulation of bioinformation. Can anyone uh, answer regulation on for bio information in EKYC in Vietnam? Basically, the, yeah. the upcoming regulation mm -hmm. is not uh, defining any specific uh, measure to do EKYC. It's up to the businesses, the firms and banks to, to, to choose how to do so. So, I mean, uh, because the, the government is now shifting to a more principle-based uh, approach in lawmaking, so this is the case. So you have total freedom to choose how to do it. As long as it, it's uh, secure, it's okay to do so. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Can I have one last question, short question? Yeah, yes, uh, I have yeah. a question for uh, Zoom. Uh, Zoom, uh, you know, you have a very interesting business model. I think many Korean companies in Vietnam can benefit from your service. So uh, I hope I'm, I'm guessing that many of the uh, people in the audience have uh, maybe businesses in uh, Vietnam already. So how do we, uh, you know, how can we test your service? How do we get, how do we benefit from your service? How do we contact you or how do you, how do, how do we get started? Yeah, no, thank you, Mr. Giff, for uh, making the introduction there. Uh, I do believe that labor relation uh, with the workers and the owners can be further improved now that Vietnam benefiting from supply chain reallocation uh, uh, to the country. Uh, what I also believe is uh, that is we're still at the very, very beginning of how we can build better employee benefit. So any inquiries, uh, just let me know. I think the FinTech Korea had my contact information once if you have interests uh, we'll set up the meeting we we'll walk you through the products and we we'll walk you to how we can add value specifically we can say that the employee is super happy to have this uh, this product because the way that we think about this is uh, the employer can be a lifeline when the employee at the lower level they need help the employee can be the lifeline i think that kind of help goes a very very long way i think at the same time, it's a proven model in other market, and this is not the developed market, but also developing market in Latin America, that after six months to 12 months, you start to see your employee morale going up. You start to see that the attrition numbers going down. It depends on the industry, 
but we do feel that this is something that is going to work out super well in Vietnam as well. So, and in first we set up the team meeting uh, so we can discuss. Integration is very, very fast. Our team can do in a couple of days as well. So no hassle on the IT side or the HR side from your end if you ever have um, the need for that. So yeah, thank you a lot for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Song and uh, Jung. Uh, I think it will be uh, uh, good uh, the information to audience as well. Uh, time is on. <laughs> we have, uh, you know, because you know, there are many, uh, many uh, audience, from, not only from you know Korea, but you know the the, uh, the Vietnam. Uh, so uh, you have uh, you know the, the many uh, uh, inquiries from uh, the audience as well, uh, including uh, uh, Vietnam fintech uh, regulatory sandbox, uh, international transport, robo advisor. Um, is there you know the, the how much you know the the, the active uh, you know the, uh, the algorithm trading in Vietnam? And um, the, the financial uh, governments, you know, the uh, requirements about uh, the capital size and the share uh, structure when, uh, you know, the foreign companies like, you know, the Korean uh, fintech, uh, you know, go to uh, Vietnam and launch their, their businesses. Uh, there are many, many, uh, you know, the, the uh, inquiries, but uh, time is tight. So uh, uh, we, Korea and Vietnam, uh, you know, the, the uh, people uh, gather here uh, Vietnam Korean people communicate after this webinar and then I'm you know to, to get some uh, information and inform uh, uh, to you uh, and also if possible you know what uh, this is you not know, the first uh, Vietnam Korea uh, Korea Vietnam you know fintech webinar I think you know the, uh, definitely we'll have uh, you know the second uh, even as well so at the time we'll cover uh, those kind of you know the issues and um, you know, the, the, we uh, invite more uh, the people uh, to the seminar. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, particularly, you know, uh, the uh, councillor uh, Du Ungok. Ungok. Uh, my French is okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, there are many people, uh, distinguished people here, and including audience. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all speakers and audience from Korea and Vietnam. Thank you for joining us for Vietnam Korea FinTech uh, seminar. We'll be seeing you next time and uh, have a wonderful day and safe. Uh, thank you for joining us for webinar for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.